It is your witchy friend Grace from Small Worlds Big Adventures with a little spooktober announcement before a review of the heart-stopping game Hako Ono. This week and the next two weeks, we'll be giving away a game from our personal collection. This week's game is Alice is Missing, a heart-stopping role-playing game about a missing girl. To qualify, you must live in the United States and comment on at least one video this week, October 8th through 14th. We will then randomly choose a winner from the comments. Also, everyone who comments throughout the month from the 1st to the 30th will be entered for a brand new copy of Horrified, a maddening cooperative board game with iconic monsters. We'll announce the winner by commenting on one of the person's comments and announce on each Sunday's video who has won. The more videos you comment on, the greater your chance to win. So let us know your thoughts on each game. Hi, I'm Gracie, and this is Scott with Small Worlds Big Adventures, and today we're going to review Hako Ono. Hako Ono is a game that plays for three to five players. It plays in about 90 minutes, and it's about $30 on Amazon. Uh, the game is kind of a sort of a hide-and-seek mm -hmm. for one villain and the other two to four players playing the game. Uh, you roam around the house, and the players are locked in and trying to find one of various ways to defeat the Haka Ono. Um, really spooky um, in that sense. Uh, when it comes to horror topics, like ghosts are like one of my like big ones, ghost and aliens. Yep. Um, and so uh, one of the scariest movies for me was, and I know it's stupid, um, The Others. Uh, it had like Nicole Kidman. The, the reverse ghost story. Yes. Sure. Very scary for me. I hated that. Okay. Um, but we're curious. What ghost stories do you love or hate um, or love to hate? Uh, go ahead and drop it below. Oh, The Grudge is also really bad. This one's a little more in line with The Grudge. This board game is a little more in line with The Grudge. Yeah. Um, when we look at rating games, uh, we rate them on a five-point scale. So that starts with terrible, bad, mixed, good, and excellent. And to kick us off, we're going to talk about player agency with uh, Hako Ono. I thought player agency was good. Um, you have a limited amount of stuff you can do on your turn, but you have a pretty good amount of selections in roaming the house and the things that you investigate and then what you do with items that you pick up. On the Hako Ono side, you also have the ability to move around the house and you get more and more powerful as the players play along. Um, and so you have a pretty decent amount of options on both sides and you're not really locked in. Um, you doing something doesn't necessarily, as a one of the humans, doesn't mess up the other humans much. So it's a pretty good amount of options. Uh, I also think it's really good. Um, I think it probably like skews a little bit more towards um, benefiting the ghost versus the players but i mean both have an equal amount of like freedom in what they do and the actions they choose to take how did you think that the mechanics played uh my vote was bad yeah uh the game is <sighs> i feel like they had an interesting idea of kind of playing hide and seek with this dangerous ghost which is yeah. kind of what you're doing but the mechanics are just really kludgy in playing that out. Actually, I take that back. I feel like originally the idea was, what if we had a mechanic where we had a bunch of players have to stack these weird disc things on top of each yeah. other and make a game around that? And the disc thing, while cute, isn't that important. It doesn't mm. really affect the game that much. Um, the ghost gets powers as the people discover pages to the, the mm -hmm. journal and can use them. Um, in the games that we've played, everybody died so quick, the ghost basically only ever had two powers out of ten. Yeah. Um, and that should be pretty telling. Uh, it just It's an interesting concept, and I feel like the way the rules work, um, in a lot of ways, just drag the game down pretty badly. Yeah, um, I said mixed, um, and one of the things I thought about was the stacking, because like in our most recent game, 
uh, I was the last one standing. And like at first, the stacking was not that big of an issue. Like it just pretty easily to stack those things. But definitely as I became more nervous about like potentially dying and stuff, that became a harder aspect, but it is cumbersome. And then also the like dynamics of, you know, how strong the ghost gets with the other players dying definitely makes it harder to escape the house, which yeah. is not great mechanics. <laughs> no, that's, that's a really good point. The humans should be building up what they need to flee mm -hmm. so that the last few turns should be a pretty good race. And it kind of was, especially in the last game. Yeah, yeah, had. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of close-ish. Um, there's so little you can do on your turn that that stacking thing takes up half of your turn. It's true. It's, that is true. Uh, um, but kind of going off of that, I want to go into theming. I know normally we go components. Normally we would. Yeah. Uh, but I want to go into theming because all of that stuff I just mentioned, which were terrible game mechanics, actually makes the theming pretty good. You know, the more people that die in real life, the harder it would be to escape the like ghost house. You do get more nervous stacking the little things and whatnot. Um, some of the things the ghost has to do, kind of like screaming and whatnot, like yeah, leads into good theming. You, you, I believe, put excellent on your... I did. Excellent. Your, your excellent I, I also put excellent. Um, I, I, I don't really have much more to say than what, what you did, honestly, on that. I will say that our experiences with the game have been up and down. Mm -hmm. We played... Um, our first game, for example, was three people. Yeah. And if you had caught me after that, I would not have said the theming was excellent. Yeah. Um, this last game we played with... Four. Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like that just really, like, even just having that one person at, yeah. changed the game dynamic enough in that maybe it was the people we played with, I'm not quite sure, but, yeah. like, um, that that game, you really did feel, oh, okay, I see what they were going for yeah. with this game, and, and when it works, it works well, really well. Yeah. Um, like you said, the stacking when you were the last person got more and more nerve-wracking yeah. because every time you fail at that stacking thing... I don't know if we mentioned the ghost gets a turn. Yeah. The ghost doesn't get a turn uh, until five rounds. Otherwise, the ghost doesn't get a turn until five rounds pass, yep. um, which is a, a big deal. Um, but yeah, the, the theming, I thought, at the end of the day, I would say the theming was excellent. A yeah. lot of the stuff really kind of goes into kind of setting this mood. Yeah, as the last standing human, uh, I did feel like I was in a horror. There's a lot of stress. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but circling back to components, um, I thought that the components were mixed. I also said mixed. There, there's really not a lot to the game. You have some cards. You have a map. Oh, no, you are incorrect. As the person who didn't set it up, you are very wrong. There are a ton of components to the game. Every room has two to four That's spots. True. Every spot has to have a little cardboard token in it yeah. that is either blank or has a thing on it. Uh, there's cards for various things, mostly yeah. for the... Uh, the ghosts' uh, powers, but there's also cards for the uh, players and the humans. There's little wooden tokens are decent enough. Uh, the board is pretty good, uh, but a lot of the tokens are so small and don't have any writing on them, you can't tell what they are. Or, or once you've played a few times, you know what it is, but it's, it's a little hard to tell. Even yeah. when you reference the uh, reference card, uh, you know, the uh, ghost monsters... Minions when the humans die are, are okay, but not great. It, it, it mixed is it really is the way to go with it. The art is pretty creepy. Yeah, the art's uh, very good. Where, where you run into it at any rate. Um, but we had issues figuring out what the tokens were. Yeah, and that is literally a, like led to a mix up in the game. Li literally led to a mix up in the game, and that is that is a fail. That is a yeah. bad fail. Uh, when especially when you're you're bringing on two people who've not played the game before mm -hmm. and don't know necessarily what the tokens are supposed to be, uh, and you're not allowed really to talk to each other, yeah. uh, it's a real problem. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned all the little different pieces. There are a lot of components. As someone who did not set up and did not, it just felt like you know, cardboard tokens and cards and then the little stacking things. Yep. And as far as like the quality of those go, they're fine. Sure. Like as far as like sturdiness and whatnot, 
Um, as you mentioned, the highlight is really the artwork, um, but it really was an issue, the token symbols and not yeah. comprehending. There was like, there's several tokens that have numbers and some were for ghost pages and some were for like things we needed and they didn't even match the style of your card. You, you needed to know the uh, numbers for the safe. And yep. You weren't sure when you were picking them up if this number went to the safe or if they were pages yeah. for the, uh, the, the uh, diary. Yeah. No, it, and it, it's a simple thing to have just like, you know, put even the word diary on it yep. or safe. Yep. Uh, sure. Once we like figured out, like, it's like, oh yeah, I guess that is a safe dial. Mm. But like, that's a hindsight thing. It's yeah. not it, it's, perfectly Once clear. you've had experience with the game, then you know what it yep. is. And it's, it's not as bad. But yeah, no, I, mixed is definitely my, my impression yeah. coming off of that. Um, and then enjoyability. My enjoyability for this game is bad. Uh, I'm kind of up, like, you know, I've had good, mixed, bad, and excellent for the yeah. other parts of the review because there are parts of this game that I think are interesting. I think the concept mm -hmm. could have been done very well if you had maybe a simpler game mm. uh, i'm not quite sure how you would do that but uh but if if you had i think i think my my enjoyability would have been higher uh, ultimately i don't like the game yeah um it's <laughs> we had basically one good or or close to good experience with it yeah but like as the ghost which is normally a a role I like to play of yep. the person, the odd man out and playing the hidden guy and stuff like that. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Um, you're not doing a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and even the stuff that you're doing is just kind of moving around the house till somebody finds you. And then that kills themselves. Like yeah. you're not, you're not taking a, a very active role in the game. Um, players like watching you guys move around are also the same thing. If they happen to just find the wrong spot, they're just gone. They're yeah. just, they're not out of the game. They turn into a, minion of the haka ono yeah uh but they they lose as a human and there's not really a lot of ways to figure out where to avoid or yeah. what to look out for it it just i don't like the game mm. yeah i said mixed and i mean it kind of comes down to one really like clunky um mechanics and then to like what i feel like is an imbalance towards the ghost um, as best as could be, like when things have gone right, the humans still lose. And, <laughs> uh, I think the last time, like it was literally like running to the thing I needed and died. And it's like you said, it's cause the ghost can just pop up and then you're dead. Yeah. Uh, there's no way to fight against it. Maybe if we've put another half dozen to a dozen games, we'd see a difference, but it does seem to skew towards the ghost. I think the two things that kind of really point to that is one, the humans just don't know where the ghost is at. And yeah. if, if you search the wrong thing, you're just out. The other thing is humans get to start the game with like an item that can help them out. But all the items have a bad negative. To them. Oh yeah. Um, and why they would do that. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Uh, most of them are like, if you use this item in a room where the Hulk is hiding, then you're, you're dead. dead. <laughs> so all right that's great what were your final thoughts on this uh i, I kind of touched on some of them one it feels like somebody had an idea for uh the stacking mechanic and decided to make a game around that or just you know a, a good idea for a hey what about a hidden ghost game and then just made it way more complex than it should yeah. have been to to make it enjoyable two with the right group yeah you you, you could end up liking yeah. this we we you know, like I said, the last game we played with, with four people, we it was okay. enjoyed. It was okay. Uh, the, we we had fun. Try, the people we played with came out of it saying they actually liked they, it. They, they, they liked it. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, they're weirdos, but they said they liked it. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, this game ultimately is, is not for me. It's yeah. the, the way it plays is too clunky. Um, it plays too slow for, for what it is. Uh, and there's just not much there that I, I find. At, after playing it that interesting yeah uh and i i said 15 to 20 minutes for for setup takedown isn't quite as bad that might even be slow because you've got to go through and set all the little discs up or the little mm -hmm. cardboard things up before you can even start putting them on the boards you know where yep. everything is and stuff and and it's it's quite a bit of setup because of that 
uh, it's definitely on the longer side for uh, a game like this. Uh, well, firstly, as the person who never has to set up, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's not true. You almost always set up. No, no, you do the majority of the setup and the reading the instructions. No, you're the reading the instructions. Uh, am I a player princess? Like they have like passenger princesses and all that. <laughs> I'm a player princess. No, because you you break down the game and put everything away. This is true. Because there's only certain ways you should put your game away. Um, my final thoughts are. If I was someone who'd enjoyed horror more, I might like this. Um, to be very like specific, I love Halloween. I don't like being scared. Yeah. Um, and that definitely, this game invokes, as the human player, a stressful thing, which is not my favorite. But if you enjoy that, you might really like this sure. game. Yeah. Um, my favorite part of it was the artwork. Um, whoever their artist was what, did a great job with that. Um, my least favorite part was, uh, the mechanics. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of where it is. Uh, after this, will we play it much? Probably not. I mean, if the boys come over, they liked it. We'd maybe give it an hour go around. Um, but on the flip side, it's $30. It's an easy, like fairly easy to add to your collection. And if you do like horror movies, especially creepy Asian children yelling at you, that's, it might be your vibe. Maybe. I uh I mean even at that price I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend the game. Yeah. There's a lot better horror games out there. Yeah. I would recommend first. Yeah. Um and as we go like as we go through this month, we'll have to see where I land on it. I don't feel like in general horror games are good at evoking fear or stress. Yeah. Um which is an interesting dynamic. So like if you're someone who loves horror movies, because they, you know, get you a little amped up. Horror board games can be a very different aspect than that. Right. I do like Fury of Dracula because there's one out person chasing down the other players. You might also like Haka Ono. Yep. Uh, Betrayal on House on the Hill also has those creepy vibes. Kind of an exploring the house kind of a mm -hmm. thing going on. Uh, so that might also be your vibe. But Scott also thinks... If you like uh, hide and seek in your backyard at night. You might enjoy this game. Uh, you might also have weird hobbies, if that's the case. We did that as a kid a lot. <laughs> Snipe hunts. One person gets a flashlight and everybody else hides in the yard. Never done that once. Yep. Uh, well, if you also had a sad childhood like Scott, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, and you want to commiserate with him over his flashlight hide-and-seek at night, uh, go ahead and hit a like on the video. If you want to hear more board game reviews, uh, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified next time we upload. If there's nothing else. See you next time.